father to another, huh? From Father Morelli to Father Lechnar. Uh, father Willie, Willie Lechnar is on the phone with us this morning. He used to be at the Church of the Good Shepherd in Kent. Now he is at Holy Family in Seward. Good morning to you and Merry Christmas. Good morning, Todd, and good morning, everyone listening. It is our conversation brought to you by Marcus and Mac, a law firm representing injured people. You and I were just talking. Uh, it has been 15 months, you said, since last we spoke on the air. That's too long, isn't it? Right, it is. It is. I had some health things develop, but now I'm back in the saddle and uh, getting ready to wrap up this last day of Advent. People, people start saying Merry Christmas, and technically... It's Advent until this afternoon, right before nightfall, and that's when the Christmas season begins. Yeah, you're absolutely correct about that. You know, uh, there is a beautiful article by Reverend Franklin Graham on the Fox News site this morning. It's on our website, and I was just reading it. And he was talking about the challenges that people have had to endure during this year and how Christmas really is the perfect remedy, isn't it? Right. Right, right. The Christmas season, and, and, and Todd, it's important for, for everyone to remember that Christmas is more than just a 24-hour period, that it's a season, mm-hmm. and, that, and that it gives us an opportunity. Um, many people are not able to uh, be with families this year, and it's important for them to remember that there's a season when they can get in touch with their loved ones. And I always make it a point because of the craziness of, of the preparation for the season I get my Christmas cards out during the season to help brighten people's days as the days go on. Well, you know, one of the interesting things about Reverend Graham's article is uh, his talking about loneliness, which uh, we understand uh, is is a very real issue in any year, but this is an abnormal year, and uh, so there's an even um, uh, more occasion, I guess, uh, for folks to feel lonely at this time of the year, and the isolationism of, of this past year and through this holiday season, um, has to wear on people. And, and so the Advent season has been a season of hope and, and light. And we pray that as we move forward from here, that, that that light will keep shining. That's, that's definitely true. And I can't help but think when you, when you mention that, that the isolation and the loneliness that people feel, we can only imagine that Mary and Joseph felt that when they were traveling to Bethlehem and there was no room for them anywhere. They they were isolated. They were quarantined, so to speak, to a, to a stable and, you know, no, no people around to even be there to comfort or to give support. I think that's important to remember that Jesus was born in a situation, not very different than this. Hmm. And we can reflect upon that, and, and I think that it's a great opportunity for us to be able to ponder these things and recognize that even if we're alone, even if we are feeling that we're missing our loved ones, I'm not going to any of my family members uh, or parishioners for Christmas. I'm staying by myself to uh, respect what's going on, but also to take the time to think about Uh, life a little bit differently, and that we can go back. We have the hope of the future to be able to go into other Christmases with great festivities and big tables and lots of food, and sometimes to appreciate the feast, you have to go through a bit of a famine. Yeah. You know, we were talking over the weekend um, in our church about the shepherds on the hillside outside Bethlehem and what they must have seen as they watched all of those travelers uh, coming into Bethlehem. And and Mary and Joseph uh, may have been among them, and they may even have been able to see them coming in, even though they would have gotten in later than most, Uh, and, and how they probably considered themselves to be bystanders to all of this, but they ended up being a key part of uh, what we know of the Christmas story sure, and, and, sure. and how special that must have been to them. There really can be no real bystanders at this time of the year, can there? No, no. Everyone, <clears throat> everyone is actively invited to participate and uh, having been blessed to be at that shepherd's field outside of Bethlehem, uh, multiple times. Each time I've been there with pilgrims, um, it, it takes on a greater meaning because it's it's about a 15, 20-minute walk from that shepherd's field 
to where the traditional site, <clears throat> excuse me, of the birth of Christ is. And, um, and, and to think of when they were running or when the angels appeared to them, what did they feel in their hearts when they were going to this mysterious event that was taking place? Mm. You bring up a very good point there, Todd. That's great to, to think about. You know, one of the interesting, they probably covered that 15 minutes in, in about two. They probably set a few records. Uh, when, right, when, right, right. I, 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 told, I told folks here in the parish that it would be from, uh, from Seward to New Florence that they had to run. <laughs> and uh, and it's, it's interesting because then when you put it into that geography, you know, then you start saying, wow, it wasn't next door. They, they had a time to think about things, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, we we talk about the significance of Christmas in today's day, and um, and to me there is such an intimate connection between Christmas and Easter uh, that yeah, you really can't have one without the other. Each reflects upon the other. Each is a vital part of the Christian experience, is it not? Right, right. Um, this is a time when we can think about Christ coming into the world and yet, as we journey closer to Easter, we can remember that even Christ had a choice, especially in Gethsemane, when he could have walked away, and he didn't. So it's, it's important to realize and recognize that his whole life was preparing for that passion, death, and resurrection that um, needed a beginning. And actually, this beginning didn't start on Christmas. In our traditions, in the Christian traditions, it began when Mary conceived Christ in her womb. Mm-hmm. We're talking this morning with Father Willie Lechnar, and uh, we are just discussing Christmas and what it means to those of the Christian faith. Um, Father, of course, there are many people who are not of the faith, uh, who have right. become indifferent to the entire message of Christ or are vehemently opposed to it. and. And there are all kinds of different experiences of the Christmas season uh, that we think of. And for those who are of the faith and, and the meaning of this season for them, how can they reach out to others who um, are, are not of the faith and, and really don't have the true meaning of Christmas within them? Well, there is, there is a commonality that you have in many of the other non-Christian traditions, um, I was blessed to be at one point oh, over 25, almost 28 or 29 years ago, to be in Jerusalem and Bethlehem on Christmas Eve and saw all of the lights from the Hanukkah candles that the, those of the Jewish tradition were lighting and having that. Light is a very common theme among the rest of the world's religions, especially in the Northern Hemisphere at this time of darkness. So a way to reach out to those who might not be of the Christian tradition would be to start with our common point, and and that could be the light, the light of God, however they revere God, however they worship God. I'm not aware of any religion that doesn't have God as a figure of light, Mm -hmm. and light brings hope. And that's that's a great way for us to start a dialogue and talk about those commonalities and then begin to ask questions about their beliefs and then share ours. So it's a respectful, mutual exchange. And I think that there are people who are open to that. And many people are curious. They don't understand what's what's the manger scene all about. Why do we have angels? Who are these three wise men that people talk about? Mm -hmm. Why is there always a camel standing and not laying down? Those are the type of questions <laughs> that they that they uh, they might ask. Oh man, that's beautiful. Uh, why is there? Why 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 does the camel always stand? That is a good question. I I, I don't know. And and is it a camel or a dromedary? <laughs> Who knows? Depends the world on... may never know. But <laughs> those are the, those are the signs and symbols that represent what it's all about. What, so that's, 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 how I, that's how I would think that you could bridge that gap between those of the Christian tradition and those who aren't. Mm-hmm. Uh, what will Christmas and the Advent season, what will the services be like for our Holy Family? For Holy Family, uh, we're, we're reaching out into the technological world just like everyone else. We're having a, uh, a, a Mass that we recorded already that's available on our website. I think you're going to find many churches of all 
denominations in the, in the Christian world are going to use the internet. And so we're having a two o'clock mass begin uh, availability at uh, this afternoon. And uh, that's at www.holyfamilyseward.org. Uh, so that will be available for those who are maybe not able to come to their parish or to any parish and experience Mass. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have the in-person at 4 p.m. and 8 p.m., and then tomorrow morning at 9.30. It's, a, it's an opportunity to spread out the services to have maybe, you know, a more social, social distance respected. Uh, folks will be wearing masks, and it will be a Christmas like we've not experienced before. So we just have to be open to the Holy Spirit and see where we go. Absolutely. I have not had a chance to speak with you since last week's announcement of Monsignor Kulik uh, becoming a Bishop Kulik and his leadership right. within the within the diocese. I know you know him and probably know him very, very well. Um, what was your reaction when you heard? I, I do know him quite well. I've worked with him for a number of years in, in many aspects, and it is indeed a true blessing for Bishop Alec Kulik to have been named uh, he's not going to be our bishop officially until his ordination and installation date on February 11th of 2021, but the time of transition is definitely going to be exciting for him and his family, his current parishioners in New Alexandria at St. James. It's a wonderful time of hope in our diocese. Really is, and uh, just from the very, very limited exposure I've had to him, and and it's mostly been online. Um, he's a really caring individual, of 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 a very direct, um, gentle uh, man. He is, and he's also a hands-on, roll up the sleeves and participate in work. He's uh, born and raised in Leechburg and that area, so he, he knows the diocese well, and he's ready to jump in, and currently he's serving as the administrator, filling the gap that was left when Bishop Molesic was moved to be the Bishop of Cleveland. Mm -hmm. And so he's had a lot of experience in prior years, and even during these uh, months of transition since September when um, Bishop Molesic was moved to Cleveland. Father William Lechnar, so good to be able to speak with you again. Let's make sure it's not 15 months the next time. That's uh, right, Todd. Uh, wishing you and all of your loved ones and all of the listeners out there a very blessed Christmas season. Remember, Christmas season goes through the baptism of the Lord January 10th. So keep your decorations up and keep the joy of the season and continue to be in touch with those loved ones. Wonderful, wonderful. Have a great day today. You too, Todd. Thanks. Bye now. Bye-bye. Father William Lechnar with us here this morning as we reflect on Christmas and on the Advent season and on its significance both for those of the Catholic faith and for those who are not of the Catholic faith and for all mankind. All mankind 